Hello, my fellow freaky little witches. If any of my coworkers are watching this, then you probably recognize this view because this is my office. I work from home three out of five days a week, so I really wanted to have my own little space that really made me feel like me. This is also where I edit my videos and make any creative stuff that I like to make, so I share my office space with our coats and our boots <laughs> because this is also our mud room. So it's an office slash mud room slash four seasons room, but I really, really love it. Let me give you a tour. You know how I like to theme my rooms? <laughs> this room has a little bit of like a Scandinavian cabin theme. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? When we first moved in, this room was very much a mud room. It had what I would describe as booger yellow walls. It was also carpeted, and I think that the carpet had to have been here since the 80s when this room and space was added on to this house. Now, if you walk up to these walls, I don't know if you can hear that, but I mean, do you hear how like hollow it is? You can like press on this and you can feel that there's more wall underneath. So my guess is that this was once like that 80s fake wood paneling, you know? And then they painted over it at some point with booger yellow. Some other things that were going on in this room when we moved in, the people before us left a desk back here for us, which we ultimately decided Decided we didn't want or need. We had to disassemble that. And then there was also two shelving units, one here and one here, and they were black. You know that like popular Ikea kind of box shelving that was really popular in like early-ish 2000s? That's what they were made of. So we also had to remove that from the walls. This was the very first project that we did when we moved in is start to paint these walls. Day three. This room is finished. Look how pretty! The carpet was so disgusting. Um, it was like stained. There were also like wires hanging out of the walls. Obviously this room was mainly used as just like a mud room or a catch-all, which is totally valid. But I definitely wanted this to be an actual space that could be used, especially if I was gonna be working in here, I wanted it to be nice. So we decided when we got our floors refinished upstairs, hire the same people to remove the carpet in this room and to lay down this vinyl flooring. So the funny thing about vinyl flooring you can usually buy vinyl from Lowe's they'll install it however they won't do it in a four seasons room because like there's this threat of cold and hot temperatures ruining the vinyl over time and then people would be like I want my money back this vinyl doesn't look so good if we look under here under my desk first of all there's a little fairy door right there hee hee <laughs> this is heat and air conditioning so it had metal tape all around it here actually there's a spot that we left and didn't paint over I was asking my uncle I was like hey, what should I do about this? He's like, just paint over it. Until you're ready to like actually refinish these cheap walls, just paint over it for now, especially since it's down there. So there is heat and air conditioning in this room. Ultimately, we would have to prove that to Lowe's if they were gonna put the floors in. And Lowe's was actually more expensive than this dude, Mike, who ended up doing our floors upstairs and in here. We had them pull the carpet up and put the vinyl down. And it just made a huge difference, especially because since this is a mud room, I mean, Luna can run in and out of this room. We come in from the garage into this room. Vinyl is so much more durable than real wood floors, so it's just a better option. Much like our bedroom, Brian and I each have our own storage areas of the room. So this is my storage area, and this is my coat slash shoe rack from Ikea, and it was black, but I didn't want anything black in here. I wanted to go with that like kind of Scandinavian, sandy, Four Seasons cabin kind of feel. So I decided to spray paint it. Today, I'm trying to be like Megan Batune. I'm spray painting with chalk spray paint this shoe thing. See, it was black, and I'm slowly but surely spray painting it. Yarn color. Okay, so something dumb happened. This was drying out in the lawn. I was carrying the tree thing and I accidentally just wasn't paying attention to every single branch and like hit this and it fell onto the porch like onto the steps and like bent. So I don't know if you can even tell in this video, maybe you can't, but it's crooked on this side. <laughs> but it still looks nice. I think it's such a prettier color in here. Over here, this is Brian's storage area. We hung one of those things, like the accordion hangy things there. He's got his own shoe rack, which some of my shoes are on because I have way more shoes than him. And then over here, we have a bunch of things for hanging out outdoors. We got our sunscreen. We've got a bunch of stuff for grilling and cooking. We have bug spray for hanging out on the back porch. This is all stuff for starting our bonfire. This rug we got secondhand from our friend Becca. 
these two chairs were part of a set of four that came with our dining table. Oh my God, it's so messy. They're the original like hundred year old chairs. We didn't want them for the dining table because they have those arms and they're like really heavy. We have two upstairs in our guest room and then these are the other two sitting here. This coffee table once belonged to the people that I used to babysit for and they're my dear friends. They had this table made by an artist out of an old door. They had their own art underneath, but after however many years of like their kids spilling juice, it just got slowly ruined. Oh shit, I left a quarter out. I'm not perfect. I ended up repainting the little art panels underneath and then put my own little art postcards that I've collected from different art museums. And this was like our main coffee table in our old apartment. And now it belongs here. I love this window. Look how cute it is. So many different types of birds come to this tree. And then I look over and it's a little picture frame with a real bird in it. These two art pieces, I painted these a long time ago. They've been through a couple iterations. I like to repaint my old paintings to make them kind of match whatever style I'm kind of going for. So I've repainted them a few times. I almost repainted them again for this room but I decided not to because I was like you know what they look nice and then this is the Luna corner this is a basket that's got a bunch of her toys and stuff in it this is her winter coat it was a basket meant for like blankets that was out in our old living room in our old apartment and as you can see she tore it up so now it's hers this coat rack shaped like a tree also came from the people that I used to babysit for they had it in their back room and then when they did some renovations on their house. They're like, do you want this? And I was like, yes, please. There's nothing I love more than like feeling like I'm living in a tree. These two art pieces I painted many years ago and they just didn't go in this space. And I just recently got around to finally repainting them and painting over them to make them better match all the rest of my art in this room. Yeah, I just repurposed some old art of mine and now I love the way they look. Look at how it goes. Ooh la la. Right here, I have a little basket full of seeds that I'm gonna be planting. This little art piece was a gift from our friend Liz for our wedding. That's us on our wedding day. These three books, super important. Birds of Michigan. Yes, I realize that we live in Illinois. Pretty much same birds. And this was on mega sale at Barnes and Noble when the Chicago Barnes and Noble was closing. So I got it. I've started to mark birds that we've gotten to see. Yesterday, Brian and I saw a freaking great horned owl. Can you even believe it? It was a great horned owl. We saw it in the woods. I got so freaking pumped. And this also I got from Barnes and Noble on that mega sale. It's a backyard bird journal. After I saw my great horned owl, I wrote about it in this journal as well. This is something I saw in a targeted ad and I was like, yep. I do need that. It is a sticker book of just beautiful, mystical, like forest shit. Witchy forest shit is kind of like the theme of my own little working corner over here. So yeah, I fucking needed this. And here is my desk. It's really organized right now and I do typically keep it this organized. It gets messy every once in a while, but for the most part, I've been really good about keeping it organized and clean because I love this space so much. When you have a space that you love and it's put together thoughtfully, I feel like at least for me, I'm I'm way more conscious of keeping it clean and organized and the way I want it to be. I've had this desk since childhood. It was like a nice family activity that we sanded and stained this desk together. And you can see that there are some old elements from when I was younger. I'll bet I drew this in like third grade, but it's still there and I like it. Just a couple of quick highlights. These are my markers for my journal. I got them off of Etsy. Blue blockers, everybody should have them at their desk. Screens are bad for our freaking eyes. I hope you're wearing blue blockers while you watch this video. This is a little jar of treats that I keep here for Luna. She's got a bed right next to my desk. Other highlights, I got the Bob Ross sticky notes right here. This little bitch, I did not realize how hot of a commodity this was. I went to Target and this was in the dollar section and I was like, yeah, of course I'm gonna fucking buy this. Then it blew up all over Instagram. Jade came over, she saw it and she was like, you got that? She's like, I've been searching at so many Targets. It was like trending. People were like, you gotta go to Target dollar sections to find these things. So I didn't realize how lucky I was, but I am and it is, it's the shit. I've got a bunch of different crystals. I like to keep things very witchy on my desk because sometimes when I'm about to go into a meeting that I really don't want to be in, I'll light some candles and I have like my little intention jar here that I made with some girlfriends a few years ago. And I'll just like take a deep breath and kind of like reconnect 
with this little corner and be like, what's important? What is real? Work isn't real. Money is not real. It's made up. My friend Arilla, who I always talk about, drew this for Brian and I. This is also us on our wedding day, but it's us as mice. My best friend Mar made some goat prints. We have them throughout the house. I just like it. I like it. I drew this, my childhood family home in Michigan. I did it with watercolor pencils and I made it in the beginning of the pandemic when I was really homesick. I also made this with watercolor pencils. This is based off of a photo I took while Brian and I were in Ireland. So this is one of the places we visited in Ireland. This art piece is by one of my favorite artists. Her name's Felicia Chow. I'll share her Instagram. I love her art so much. This little spooky creature, I think represents something kind of deeply personal to her in a lot of her art pieces It shows up. But for me, this is Luna. These big drawers are where I keep some of my equipment. Lots of hard drives and things I keep in there. This is where I keep all my stickers. Back in January, I was going through a really tough time and so I decided to do some retail therapy and I spent like 60 bucks on stickers. Maybe even 70. These ones I actually just recently got and I think it was like $11 for this pack of stickers from Michael, so. Go ahead, make it 80. $80 on stickers, whatever. Look how nice a journal looks with a billion stickers on it. You're trying to tell me that's not the best? Also, I'm not pregnant. I have a fibroid on my uterus and they just want to check on it. And guess what? It's only grown a tiny little bit. There, is that what you wanted to know, perverts? I got more stickers right there. I've got a room spray right there that I love spraying while I have to sit in meetings. This is like a hand balm. It's a balm. It smells amazing. Right here is where I taped my tattoo idea so that I could stare at them every day while I sat at my desk. And I did ultimately end up loving them and put them on my body. Fun little fucking detail that's in this room. Look at these beautiful purple doorknobs. The purple crystal doorknobs, they're so gorgeous. I don't know who put these in here, but there's like little accents like this around the house in different places. This one is so cool and fun and it reminds me of like my little witchy corner. Obviously, people who lived here before us also had a dog because there's scratch marks in here. Now Luna is gonna demonstrate her DIY project. This is the only project in the house that she did herself. Look at that, she made her own doggy door. Good job, Looney. Yeah, so this screen door wasn't always flappy, but Luna ran into it one too many times and finally one day just busted on through. She was smiling and laughing and having a great time. And now she just uses it as a doggy door. We think about fixing it sometimes, but it's actually honestly really nice. Really good job, Looney girl. Something that I experience when I come home at night and it's dark in the backyard, but this lamp has been left on. It's the best feeling in the world to look through this window and see that this room and this desk being beautifully lit by this lamp is mine. It's ours, like we own it. It's this magical feeling that has not gotten old, but coming home to this house at night and seeing this view when I first walk in the door makes me so happy. I hope that I never get over it. I hope I never get too jaded to enjoy that. I think that's about it. It is so nice to A, have my own space, my own little corner of the house that's just meant for me. Brian and I had to share an office space in our old apartment, which during the pandemic became pretty difficult. When you do have that space, just make it your own. For me, I just really wanted to be surrounded by things that really brought out my inner skanky forest witch, so. Okay, here comes a full tour. Brian just brought me a freaking Bloody Mary while I'm editing this video at my beautiful desk. It's a desk-ception. Love y'all. Have a great day. Oh, oh.